This video is brought to you by Wondrium. We love providing you historically accurate educational stories to enrich your life experiences, expand your knowledge, and to let your imagination create amazing new worlds. Wondrium does exactly that, and your brain is going to love this place. Are you tired of spending hours in the library searching for information? Want to learn more but don't have time to research? Then Wondrium is the right place to be. It's an entertaining and educational space, and that's exactly what someone with an inquiring mind needs. With content Wondrium has to offer, you'll find everything that piques your interest with over 6,000 hours of thoroughly researched, relentlessly entertaining video courses, documentaries, and series. We at Simple History were really mind blown by the story of the Forbidden City, which was the palatial home to 24 Chinese emperors for five centuries, built upon an order from Emperor Zhu Di that took over the throne by overthrowing his own nephew. We highly recommend you to watch it. Please visit wondrium.com slash simple history or click the link in the description to start your free trial today and enjoy videos you won't find anywhere else. Show your support for our content by subscribing to Wondrium now. Weird Camouflage in History The primary goal of camouflage is to subtly blend in with your surroundings to avoid detection using muted or subdued color tones. Of course, the opposite is also a method of disguise, such as the bright colors found in nature on butterfly wings and tiger pelts and the black and white tones of a zebra. It's been recorded that in the 4th century AD, the Romans under Julius Caesar covered their scout ships in a blue substance, including the sails, ropes, and even the crew, to mask them from being seen when they were gathering intelligence all along Britain's coastline. The British began to introduce a standard camouflage uniform in India in the mid-1800s as their red uniforms advertised their location from miles away in the arid, dusty landscapes. Their new uniforms were a drab, earth color that was referred to as khaki, which was the Hindu word meaning dust-colored. This khaki uniform carried on being worn in the Boer Wars in South Africa between 1899 and 1902, and through to the global conflicts of World War I and World War II. Dazzle Camouflage not only were the British the first to standardize camouflage uniforms for their foot soldiers, they were also one of the first to experiment with more unique designs. Just like in ancient Rome more than 2,000 years before, a major issue in World War I was how to conceal your ships at sea. From the early stages of the war, artists and inventors showered the Royal Navy with suggestions on how to hide their ships. Most were impractical, such as covering them with mirrors, disguising them as whales or even clouds. But marine artist Norman Wilkinson is credited with an innovation known as dazzle camouflage. Rather than hiding the ship, Wilkinson's idea was to paint the ship in such a way as to break up its form to confuse German U-boat crews when they were watching the vessels through their periscopes. The dazzle design came in a variety of colors, black and white, green and purple, orange and blue, and was painted in geometric shapes and curves. The patterns disrupted the line of the bow and stern, making it difficult to tell which end was which, and therefore making it difficult to determine in what direction it was heading. It could even prevent making out the number of vessels that were actually there. Although Dazzle Camouflage's effectiveness was often debated, the Royal Navy was sufficiently convinced enough to paint 2,300 of its ships by the end of the war. It still had limited use in World War II, but by then most ships were painted in a dull matte gray color. The ship that was disguised as a tropical island. In 1942, just after the Japanese had invaded the Dutch East Indies, now known as Indonesia, all Allied ships in the area were ordered to withdraw to Australia. The HNLMS Abraham Kreinze, a minesweeper and escort vessel, was part of a convoy of four ships, but the other three were attacked and sunk. This left her vulnerable to an attack by enemy aircraft, and having only a maximum speed of 15 miles per hour, her chances of escaping looked slim. The captain had a crazy idea and ordered his 45-man crew to cut down trees, branches, and foliage from the nearby islands and arrange them on the ship to create a mock jungle canopy. Any remaining exposed sections of the hull were painted to resemble rocks. This now transformed the little warship into a floating tropical island. As there were thousands of tiny islands in the area, the warship blended in well. 
but because tropical islands don't move, they had to anchor along the coastline and hide during the day and only travel at night to avoid being discovered. They were the last ship to escape from Java and the only one of its class to survive in the region, but it took them eight days to sail to Australia. World War II Spitfire Camo Tint Camouflage During World War II, some Allied Spitfires had their radios and armaments removed and were repainted in pink and white colors so that they could fly on low, fast reconnaissance missions. This coloring was known as camo tint, and it allowed the pilots to blend into the cloud cover, particularly at dawn and dusk. These missions were extremely dangerous, especially as the plane was unarmed, but gathering photographic intelligence was of the utmost importance. Pink Panther The British Special Air Service, known universally as the SAS, is one of the top special forces units in the world. In 1967, they started to use a heavily modified Land Rover Mark II for a lot of their missions, especially in hot spots like Oman, where between 1970 to 1977, in an operation codenamed Storm, the SAS helped support and train the local government's armed forces, who were fighting an intense war against communist rebels at the time. These new Land Rovers became crucial to such operations and were painted in a sand pink color in order to help them blend in with the desert terrain that they were often being used in, earning them the nickname of Pink Panther. Contrary to the popular belief, the sandstorms didn't blast the paint off to reveal a pink primer underneath. The unusual sand pink camouflage scheme has its origins in the British Army and can be traced back to 1942 when it was used in the North African campaign. It was not applied to main battle tanks, instead being mostly used on non-fighting vehicles such as trucks. These vehicles were phased out of service along with their pink color scheme in the mid-1980s and were replaced with the long wheelbase Land Rover 110, which has a much more subdued color scheme. Also, the newer Land Rover rectified one of the few weaknesses of the previous sturdy Pink Panthers, and that was their terribly bumpy rides across rough terrain. The new 110s had the superior coil spring suspension as found in the upmarket civilian Range Rovers. But still, to this day, the SAS refer to these new vehicles affectionately as Pink Panthers, or simply as Pinkies. Makeshift Camouflage Sometimes it becomes necessary to try and conceal yourself or your equipment as quickly as possible using anything that's available to do so. This happened during World War II during the Battle of the Bulge in December 1944 when the U.S. 101st Airborne Division was ordered to hold Beston in southeast Belgium against the Germans. They soon became surrounded and dug themselves in to repel their attackers. Heavy snowfalls made their uniforms and overcoats stick out from their white surroundings and they became obvious targets. Local villagers came out and gave the troops their white bedsheets so that they could improvise some makeshift camouflage with them to conceal themselves. They even made use of lace table doilies, which they tied on to their helmets and were quite effective with their white patterns. By the time the 101st were relieved, the sheets were ripped and in tatters, but they had certainly helped camouflage the soldiers. After the war, Major John Hanlon of the 101st made an appeal for bedsheets in his hometown in Massachusetts and personally delivered them to the villagers in Baston to thank them for their kindness. Afghan National Army Forest Camo Some camouflage is crazy, but not by design. The U.S. supplied the Afghan Army with a truly bizarre camouflage uniform, one that replicated lush forests. The United States spent up to $28 million more than it had to on camouflage uniforms for the Afghan National Army. The Pentagon needlessly spent millions to license a camouflage pattern that replicates lush forests. Most of Afghanistan's landscape, however, is desert, and the Defense Department owns dozens of similar patterns it could have used for free. John Sopko, the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction, said the pattern was based on a fashion preference, not by experts, but by the Afghani Minister of Defense, Abdul Rahim Wardak, who had apparently looked at the available selection and decided that he liked the woodland, urban, and temperate color patterns the most. Forests cover only 2.1% of Afghanistan, making a woodland-style choice odd, and neither the Pentagon nor Kabul could provide documentation on justifying the choice. According to the Special Inspector General, the overriding priority, the search for a unique uniform pattern, may have obscured common sense and logical reasoning. Urban Camouflage 
In 2017, Britain channeled their Cold War ideas by covering some of their tanks in the Berlin Brigade camouflage that was a throwback to the 1980s tanks. The camouflage was so named because it was used in Germany on British tanks defending West Berlin from the Soviets after the war. The Berlin Brigade Urban Camo was primarily used by C Squadron of the 14th and 20th King's Hussars Regiment in Berlin. As the usual bronzes and greens of a forest environment stood out in a city, this new camouflage was designed to better fit the urban environment and so consisted of thick blocks of gray, white, and brown. The block shape would help the tank fit into the straight lines of city buildings and disguise its size. The British military hoped that by once again rolling out this pattern, they could better hide their tanks in modern urban environments. Night Desert Camouflage Night Desert Camouflage is one of the stranger-looking patterns, created in the 1980s and worn by the U.S. Army during the Gulf War. The pattern consists of a tight grid overlaid by random splotches of color. It came supplied as a parka coat and trousers designed to be worn over a soldier's usual camo gear in the night to avoid detection by night vision lenses, as these devices used grids to scan areas, and the idea was that the pattern would confuse the equipment. However, by the time the camouflage was actually used, these night vision devices had been greatly improved. A night test conducted by a sniper of a Marine Corps battalion concluded that the night desert camouflage actually made it easier to spot the soldiers than their regular day camouflage. The pattern was retired by the mid-1990s, although now it's found some popularity in the fashion industry instead of the military. Digital Camouflage most of the camouflage used by the U.S., British, and Canadians nowadays is a variation of the digitized camo pattern. Digital camouflage looks like regular camo, only it's pixelated. Usually created with computer assistance, this camo is for the 21st century soldier or tank. It can be referred to by a few different names depending on the pattern variation and country, including multi-scale camouflage, fractal camouflage, or EMR camouflage. Its purpose is to confuse and provide coverage over a wide range of distances. Larger patterns work best from afar and are better at concealing more substantial items like tanks, whereas smaller digital patterns are better for individual soldiers and are more effective up close. Digital camouflage got its inspiration way back in the 1940s during World War II, when the Germans and Soviets started to experiment with overlaying micro and macro patterns in their camouflage to make an object harder to spot. Research in digital camo continued over the next 50 years, until in the early 2000s, pixelated camo was properly developed and was used both by the Canadians and U.S. Marines, although the specific pattern each chose was slightly different. The Canadian CAD pad consists of dark greens and blacks to make it almost impossible to spot at night, even with night vision detection devices. The U.S. Marines MARPAT, on the other hand, is more colorful and contains more greens. It was designed to be distinctive and stand out from other camouflage patterns as the pattern for the U.S. Marines.